Um, in the on the next page, still using our trig functions, we're still applying the same concepts that we've been using before. We haven't asked you anything different, but now we're just using other derivatives. So here, when this says, find an equation of a line that is tangent to the graph, what is the first thing that you should be thinking about when you see equation of the line tangent to? Okay, so I will have to find a slope. What else? How is this going to be written? Point slope. So we've got y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. We need to find the slope, which is what? How's, how do I find the slope? What do I use? The derivative, f prime. Okay, it depends on what you're given. You might use the power rule. It just depends. Okay. So in order to write an equation of a line that is tangent to the curve, we need two things. What are the two things other than the equation here? The point, okay, I have half the point, true? How do I find the other half? Plug it in. Can you be more specific than that? What's it? Ah, pi over three. Plug your x value into the function that's given because it says y is equal to. Evaluate the secant of your x value. So y is equal to the secant of pi over three. Okay. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I memorized the unit circle, I didn't memorize secant. I memorized cosine. So what's cosine of pi over 3? One half. One half. So then what's the relationship to the secant? Flip it over, it's 2. So that means my y value is equal to 2. <coughs> okay, we have the point. Now we need to find the slope. How do we find the slope? Take the derivative, y prime. Okay, so we have y prime is equal to, what is the derivative of the secant? Secant x tangent x. It's okay to look on the other page. Okay, now what do I do with this? I have the derivative, what do I do? Plug in pi over 3 to find the slope. Okay, so we want to evaluate y prime at pi over 3. So that means I have the secant of pi over 3 times the tangent of pi over 3, and this will give me my slope, and then I can plug in all the pieces. Uh, we already figured out what the secant was. This is equal to 2. What's tangent of pi over 3? Square root of 3. I heard a lot of 3's, but it's just a, it's a square root of 3. So this represents my slope. So I have the slope, and I have the point. Are we ready? Yeah. So this is y minus 2 is equal to 2 square root of 3 times x minus pi over 3. Questions? Okay, so the procedure has been the same every single time, right? Once you're given the function and an x value, you plug in the x value to get your y value, find the derivative, plug in the x value to find the slope. You notice I did not use the word it that entire time. We just need to work on getting rid of it. It's when you are speaking, it's sort of like you have to get rid of the word like. You know how you say I know it's hard, isn't it? Okay, so you gotta get rid of the word you gotta get rid of the word it. You need to be very specific. So when you guys are working on your writing prompts, avoid using the word it. When you sit for the AP, readers don't like the word it. From the moment they see the word it, they stop reading. You're not specific. What is it? Belly buttons, bunny rabbits? Pinky toes, like what is it? They don't know. Okay? Questions on this problem? Okay, so let's move to the next one. Find all x values on the given interval. Okay, so now we're given specific intervals here on which the graph of this function has a horizontal tangent line. Okay, so we've seen this before. What does this mean? Horizontal tangent line, what does it mean? What is zero? The slope is zero. Horizontal tangent line means the slope is equal to zero. This is important because when you are reading an FRQ or any free response question, it will not say, by the way, the slope is zero. You have to read into it. You have to know what this means. Okay, if I said to you the slope, or wait, has a vertical tangent line, what does that mean about the slope? Ah, we're gonna get to that eventually. Okay, so it's important that you understand the terminology. Okay, so 
Uh, we need to find all x values where we have a horizontal tangent line to this function, which means where the slope is zero. As soon as you know you need to calculate the slope, what does that mean you're going to have to do? Derivative. Take the derivative. Okay, so we have f prime of x is equal to? One what's minus okay, one minus cosine of x. Okay, this function represents how we could find the slope, but don't we know what the slope is equal to? Yeah. Yes. So can I set this equal to zero? Yeah. So we have one minus the cosine of x is equal to zero. Add cosine. Okay, guys, listen very carefully. You did this in pre-calc, where typically you had to solve and you were given a domain restriction of zero to two pi. Here we gave you negative two pi to two pi. So you just need to think about this. First of all, negative two pi and two pi, tell me about where they're located. Tell me something about them. Well, yeah, <laughs> located, located, louder. They're in the exact same place, okay? So that means those values should be the same, right? So let's think about this. We want to know what angle do we plug in for x that when I evaluate the cosine of that angle, I get 1. Give me the one that you know right off the top of your head. Where is it? 0. What else is located at 0? Oh, 2 pi. What else? Oh, do you see how that works? Yes? Yeah? Okay. So what we're saying here is x is equal to negative 2 pi, 0, and 2 pi. Now, why did I have to include all those when they're in the exact same spot? Look here. But why all values? What, what notation is telling me all? Ah, uh, the bracket. Had this been parentheses, what would I give as my answer? Zero. Just zero. Right? Does everyone understand the difference? Yes. Okay, so had this been, I don't know, let's say a four-point question, you got this work, so there's two points, you only gave zero, oh, at least minus one. Okay, so you need to make sure you read the notation. Okay? Questions? All right, so now we're moving into what are we doing with this? And I alluded to that before, uh, the whole reason that we're learning to take the derivative, because there is an application really to calculus. Uh, it's not just the physics part, but there is the application of calculus. So here it says that this particle is moving along um, so that at any time greater than zero, its position is given by the following function. So we have a position function um, named x of t. Okay, And here it says find the velocity at time t, meaning find an equation that would give me the velocity at any time value that I give you. 1, 7, 8.5. So I'm looking for a general function. Does everyone understand what that means? Okay. So what's the relationship of poli uh, excuse me, position and velocity for those of you in physics? <laughs> Louder. I heard something. Is it? other way around. Velocity is the derivative of the position function, okay? So velocity is typically the position functions given in terms of s prime of t. So in this case, it's going to be the, just the derivative of this. Okay, they can use any variable they want, whoever they are, right? Okay, so we're just going to take the derivative. So x prime of t is equal to 1 minus 2 sine of t. Does everyone see how I got that? All I did was take the derivative. So now if I asked you to find the velocity at time 7, what would you do? Seven. Plug 7 in for t and evaluate, right? You need a calculator for that? Okay, yes. so velocity. How many of you in here are taking physics or have taken? Okay, ooh. Uh, velocity. Tell me something about velocity. Characteristics. Okay. Magnitude, which is more speed, right? Magnitude is speed. And direction. So what does that mean? Ah. Uh, velocity can be negative. What does that mean? Yeah. You're moving in the opposite direction. Yeah. Okay. So here, this is important. Velocity. And I'm going to... Magnitude is the same thing. Has speed and direction. 
which means, it says direction, okay, velocity can be negative if you want to put it in plain English. Oh my gosh. Okay? You can have a negative velocity. It just means that the particle or whatever you're measuring the velocity for is going in the opposite direction. Okay, the relationship of speed and velocity is that speed is the absolute value of velocity. Why? Does not have direction, right? Just because I go in reverse doesn't mean that my speed is negative, correct? I'm just driving and ruining my engine by driving backwards, okay, at high rates of speed. So what I need to do here is I technically have my speed function. I just need to take the absolute value. So in this case, speed is going to be the absolute value of x prime of t, okay, and we want to evaluate that at pi over 2. So we want to evaluate the absolute value of 1 minus 2 sine of pi over 2. Okay, what's the sine of pi over 2? 1. Okay, so this is 1 minus 2 times 1. That scared me for a second. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. We take the absolute value. In this case, the answer is 1. And then you would have some unit of measurement. I'm making this up because it's not, there's no unit in here anywhere. Let's say meters per second. Okay? That's a standard common one. Okay, so this is important too because speed has no direction. And what that means in English is speed cannot be negative. Okay? All right, last piece, and then I'm going to show you that thing in the calculator. Find the values of t at which the particle is at rest. What does that mean? Zero. What is zero? What is which one? Velocity. Velocity. That's right. It's not. It being the particle is not moving. So what this means here is that velocity is equal to zero. So we have a velocity function. It's back up at the top. We're going to take 1 minus 2 sine of t, set that function equal to zero, meaning my particle is at rest. So we need to solve. So I'm going to add 2 sine of t. Okay, divide by 2. Okay, I asked you a question before. Okay, and you're being asked here, what angle do I put in for t to get one half? First of all, think about where is the sign positive? One, two, three, or four? One. And? Okay, so that means I'm going to have two answers. Okay, what's the first answer? Pi over six. Five pi over six. And because we don't have a domain restriction, I would say plus two pi k because that could mean positive or negative revolutions. Now, typically you'll be given a domain restriction, okay, but this is just to sort of cover yourself. Questions? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Yes, dear? So on a quiz, like if there was no domain restriction, would we write plus two? You should write plus two, but if you forget it, I probably wouldn't mark it off, but, okay. Any other questions before I show you the calculator? Okay, so before I show you the calculator, I just want to remind you